Hi everyone, we're coming to you from the Alabama Department of Archives and History, located in Montgomery, Alabama, our state's capital city. Today we're bringing you a program titled Alabama State Animals. Over the next several minutes, we'll learn about some special animals from our state. Some that are only found in Alabama, and others that are famous around the world. We'll also give you video instruction on a couple of animal crafts the materials for which you can pick up at your local library. So parents and guardians, remember to go to the library hosting this video and pick up the packets you need for it. My name is Christian and without further ado, let's start the program and learn about some Alabama state animals. Did you know that we have official Alabama state animals, including the Yellowhammer, our state bird, the Red Hill Salamander, our state amphibian, the red-bellied turtle, our state reptile, the black bear, our state mammal, and the largemouth bass, our state freshwater fish. Now we're going to move to this board over here where we'll be doing an activity. We're going to try to figure out where these animals that we just saw live. They all live in different regions, different habitats, and we're gonna to try to figure that out together. This illustration shows different habitats, or homes, for the animals of Alabama. In it we have trees, a rocky outcropping, a steep slope, shallow water, and deep water. Let's look at the different animals that we just discussed and figure out where they would live in an environment such as this. The largemouth bass became the official state freshwater fish in 1975. It has an olive green to greenish gray color to it. They eat minnows, small fish, and amphibians. It is a popular sport fish and can be found in large numbers in all of Alabama's inland waters. So where would we put the largemouth bass? Would we put it in the trees? Well, no, fish don't go in trees, right? Do they live on slopes? Maybe they could, but I think it would tumble down the slope trying to find the water. Fish often like to live in deeper water where it's nice and cool. So let's put this fish in the deeper water over here. The next animal we'll talk about is the black bear. The black bear became the official state mammal in 2006. Black bears in Alabama are normally black with a brown muzzle with the occasional white on the chest. They are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and animals. Fruits, berries, nuts, and acorns help them prepare for hibernation. They eat insects, fish, and small animals after they emerge in the spring. In Alabama, black bears can be found in both the northwestern part, Cherokee County, and southwestern part of the state, such as in Mobile and Washington counties. Black bears make their homes in caves, rocky outcrops, tree cavities, and underground chambers they dig themselves. So then, where would the black bear go? Would it live in the trees? Black bears can climb trees pretty well, but they're so heavy, a lot of branches wouldn't be able to hold them. They might fall and hurt themselves. Would they live in the water? Black bears can swim, but not forever, and they can't hold their breath that long. What about the rocky outcrop? sounds a lot like what they would live in. It's one of the things that we listed just a moment ago. So let's stick the bear on the rocky outcrop. The next animal is the red-bellied turtle. The red-bellied turtle became the official state reptile in 1990. It is a freshwater turtle and is named for the red color on the bottom of its shell. The upper shell may be greenish to dark brown or black with red, orange, or yellow markings. Red-bellied turtles are herbivores, meaning they eat only plants, largely underwater plants. They prefer soft, sandy bottoms in shallow areas of freshwater streams and rivers. When the weather is nice, you might see a red-bellied turtle sunning itself on a log in the water. The red-bellied turtle is endangered because of habitat loss by humans. They are mostly located in Mobile and Baldwin counties in the southwestern part of the state. So as we said, these turtles like to live around the water. They might be able to stay up on this slope, but they're definitely not going to live in the trees. Hmm. There is still space open in the water on this sandy bottom here. 
So let's say that's where the turtle is going to live. Oh, and look, it still has a log above it that it can use to sun itself. The next animal is the red hill salamander. The red hill salamander became the official state amphibian on April 13, 2000. It has a dark brown tail and body and grows approximately 10 inches in length. The salamander's diet consists of insects and spiders. These salamanders are rare and can only be found in certain parts of Alabama, an area known as the Red Hills. It is in Butler, Conecuh, Crenshaw, Monroe, and Wilcox counties. However, this habitat is protected under federal law because the species is threatened, meaning it is likely to become endangered in the future. These salamanders live in burrows or holes along steep, heavily shaded slopes. So where does this thing live? Well, the red hill salamander, as we just read, likes to live in slopes, heavily shaded slopes. And look, there's the trees casting shade right over there for our salamander and its new home. The last animal we'll discuss is the yellowhammer. The yellowhammer, or northern flicker, became the official state bird on September 6th, 1927. They are a species or type of woodpecker. They use their beak to hit or hammer solid objects like wood in order to communicate with each other and to dig into trees. They eat insects, such as ants, grasshoppers, and crickets, and they also eat berries, seeds, and nuts. The yellowhammer makes its home in hollowed out spaces in trees. Even though they prefer to live in the woods, they can also be found in suburban areas, like neighborhoods. So where does this animal live? Well, as we just described, it likes to live in trees. Same with a lot of other birds. So let's put this little guy in the trees. As you can see, each of these animals has their own respective home or habitat that they live in. And today you're going to learn about one of these animals and its respective habitat with a book that Joya will now read to you. Hi everyone, my name is Joya and I'll be reading Welcome Home Bear, a book of animal habitats by Il Sung Na. But first, what is a habitat? A habitat is the home or environment of an animal, plant, or other organism. Now let's read Welcome Home Bear. Every morning, Bear woke up in the same green forest under the same blue sky. One day he thought, I will find a new home. So he climbed up to see Bird but her nest was so high in the trees. He dug down to visit Mole, but it was stuffy underground and the dirt got in his nose. He went to see Goat, but standing on her steep cliff made him dizzy. He swam to Octopus, who was surprised to see him, but the ocean was too deep. He found Polar Bear and the Puffins, but the snow was so cold under his paws. So he went to see Camel, but now his paws were hot in the desert sand. He paid a visit to Orangutan, but it rained, and rained, and rained. He decided to find the hippos, but there was mud everywhere. After visiting all his friends, Bear was tired. He wanted to be somewhere that was not too high, not too stuffy, not too steep, not too deep. Not too cold, hot, rainy, or muddy. He knew just where he wanted to be.
So, we've had the chance to talk about some of Alabama's state animals and the environments or habitats in which they reside. We've also learned and heard a story about a very great and bodacious bear who tried out many environments but knew exactly where he wanted to be. So, my name's Richard, and today I'll be your host on Who's That Animal? Today we'll be talking about Alabama's most famous animals and why they're famous. Let's say hello to our first famous animal, first contestant, come on down! So, our first famous animal is a Jersey cow from Huntsville. In 1892, she became the world's top butter producing cow by producing 1,000 pounds of butter. You got it. Do you know who she is? No? All right, contestant, tell us who you are. I'm Lily Flag. Let's get a, a big round of applause to Lily Flag. Thank you, Lily Flag. Coming up next, we have a hometown favorite. Second contestant, come on down. All right, our second contestant is a red pile chicken from Bessemer, Alabama, who has an affinity for the magical things in life. She lived to the age of 16, which is really old for chickens, and was certified as the oldest living chicken by the Guinness Book of World Records in 2004. Do you know who she is? Do you? Contestant, who are you? I'm Matilda the Chicken. Everyone, give a big round of applause for Matilda, yes! Alakazam! Okay, so, wait a second. What do we have here? Ah, contestant, come on in. A legend in his hometown, this best friend to everyone rolled into the city in 1993, spreading love. He began migrating from one business to the other and became the town dog, even earning his own bank account for food and vet visits. He made such an impact that the city began putting up signs to honor him. Do you know who he is? Do you? Contestant, tell us who you are. I'm Fred the Town Dog. Everyone give a big clap and a big hand for Fred the Town Dog of Rockford. Woo! Last, but certainly not least, we have a movie star from Huntsville. Contestant number four, come on down! Too cool for school. So, this actor, cast to play the lead role of Santa's reindeer in the movie Prancer in 1987, this movie became a Christmas classic and thrusted this wonderful reindeer actor into the spotlight. Do you know who he is? Do you? Do you? Contestant number four, please, tell us who you are. Well, my name is Boo, and it's nice to meet you. Woo! Everyone give a round of applause for Boo! All oh, right, now, wasn't that fun? So, I just want to say thank you again uh, for coming to another episode of Who's That Animal? I'll see you all next time, but in the meantime, enjoy some words from our sponsors over at The Crafting Corner. Hello everyone, and welcome to Crafting Corner. Today we will be doing two different crafts related to Alabama state animals. Both a salamander wristband, related to the Red Hill Salamander, our state amphibian, and the Yellowhammer Birdcraft, inspired by our state bird, the Yellowhammer. Let's start with the Salamander Wristband. For this craft, you will need scissors, glue, coloring utensils such as colored pencils, crayons or markers, a thin strip of paper, and our Salamander Template Sheet, included with your craft packet. Start, start by cutting out the different pieces of your salamander. That includes the spiral-shaped body and the four legs. Next, color the cutout pieces of your salamander. Make sure you color the legs and the body with whatever colors you would like. 
Once finished, glue the legs of your salamander to the body. Glue your salamander body to a strip of paper. This strip of paper should be long and thin enough so that it can fit comfortably around your wrist while being stapled or taped together on the other side. If using a stapler, ask a grown-up for help. Connect both sides of that strip of paper and your wristband is finished. Next we will do the Yellowhammer bird craft. For this activity, you will need the Yellowhammer bird template included in your craft packet, coloring utensils such as markers, crayons, or colored pencils, glue, tape, or a stapler, and finally, two pieces of colored paper. Color the shapes on your bird template. This will be the body, beak, and belly of your Yellowhammer bird. Remember to color both sides of each shape. Once finished, cut out the body of your bird. Fold the bird body along the dotted line, and use scissors to cut a slit along the thick black line that runs across the dotted line. Take your two pieces of colored paper, fold both pieces of colored paper in an accordion fold. Cut out the two belly sections and glue them on each side of the bird. Cut out the two triangles for the beak and glue them together on each side of the bird's face. Make sure they are lined up. If you have not already drawn eyes on your bird, do so now. You can also use eye stickers or googly eyes as an alternative. Push the accordion folded paper that was not cut through the slit in the bird body with the bend facing upward. Spread the accordion folds out so the bird's wings spread out as well. Use scissors to cut one of the bent pieces down the middle. These two shorter pieces will be your tail feathers. Staple or tape the two tail feather sections to the end of the bird body that says tail. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Crafting Corner. For additional help with your craft, be sure to view the instruction sheet included in your packet. Thanks for watching! Thank you everyone for watching this video. We are the Alabama Department of Archives and History and we hope you enjoyed learning about some of our Alabama state animals. Remember, if you haven't picked up the crafting packets from your local library, be sure to do so. We're very happy and pleased to announce the archives is back open Monday through Friday with Saturday hours starting on June 12th. For more information on the archives, visit archives.alabama.gov. And for more resources about Alabama state history, please visit alabamahistoryhome.org. Thank you, everyone, and have a good summer. Bye. Bye.